Hey folks, good morning and welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. Today we're going to be riding Honda's 2021 CRF 450 RL. That's right, a new model name and a couple small tweaks for Honda's 2021 450cc Dual Sport. So let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. Well folks, there it is, Honda's 2021 CRF 450 RL. This is Honda's 450cc dual sport entry for the 2021 model year. Honda has renamed this motorcycle. It was previously known as the CRF 450L. And to make this motorcycle better align with the rest of its competition spec, CRF R spec bikes, Honda put the R in front of the L because after all, this is based on Honda's competition spec uh, motocross and off-road bike, but we'll get that get into that in a little bit. They also added plastic handguards, remapped the ECU, ECU, which was much needed, and removed $400 off the price tag. So let's swing a leg over this thing and see what it's like to ride. All right, folks, a good old fashioned mechanical key. I'm very happy right now. Let's turn her on. Electric start and fuel injection make it easy to get the engine lit. Right away sitting on this motorcycle, it feels like, guess what? A dirt bike. The seat is nice and tall, very skinny. These shrouds give a good area for you to grip the motorcycle with your knees in the sitting position. Obviously, because it's a dirt bike, it's easy to squeeze with your knees when you're standing. And this Renthal handlebar has an upright bend. You can obviously adjust the position of the handlebar moving it forward or aft or rolling it forward or aft. I generally like the handlebar to be in line with the fork. So the handlebar should be in line with the fork. That gives a good neutral riding position, which I like. Now, this 450 RL has a decent size set of foot pegs. They're serrated, so you have good grip against your foot peg. The engine died. So even though Honda re remapped the ECU, this thing still is a CRF 450, so it's going to be a little bit uh, cold blooded, especially in the street configuration, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Serrated foot pegs have good grip against the boot, there is no rubber insert. And this motorcycle has an extreme level of vibration. You can feel the vibration through the engine at every control, from the handlebar to the foot pegs to the seat. It's all right there. This thing loves to stall. But because it is so slim, it is easy to ride in between traffic here in the state of California engine this 450 rl is powered by honda's legendary 449 cc water-cooled unicam engine honda's been cranking out these engines for i don't know since 2002 and steadily refined these engines and god they are just awesome this bike puts out right around 38 horsepower to the IRC the dual sport back tire, 38 horsepower, which is significantly less than the 450R model. So the motocross competition bike makes around 55 horsepower these days. So that's about 17 horsepower less than this motorcycle. And the reason why this bike is detuned is just realistically for reliability. When those engines are out cranking 55 horsepower, they don't have the longest durability. You gotta remember, a motocross bike is meant for competition, meant for racing. Theoretically, you're gonna rebuild those engines every so often. 
you know, realistically, the CRF450R engine is built so heavy duty style that even though they recommend re ringing it, re pisting it, putting a new crankshaft in every once in a while, those things are so bulletproof that they never really need it. But to make sure that this motorcycle can then go the, the miles it needs to go as a street bike, it has been detuned. Still, 38 horsepower, it still has plenty get up and go. Six speed transmission puts power back to the chain final drive on the motocross bike and off road bike. It's a five speed gearbox. You get one extra cog, cable actuated clutch, and it works very well. I love how nimble this motorcycle is. It's like riding a dirt bike on the street. 289 pounds with this 2.0 gallon titanium fuel tank tip filled to the brim. It's pretty heavy, right around 45 pounds heavier than the motocross bike. And you're wondering like, where does all that weight come from? Well, to make this thing street legal, Honda had to spend a lot of time redesigning certain components and adding adding material that will cancel cancel out the noise the engine the swing arm even the sprocket the drive sprocket has a rubber coating around it to help reduce noise and it's actually pretty impressive how quiet running this motorcycle is obviously you hear the engine you hear a little bit of hum from the tires but it's so moderate especially compared to riding a straight up dirt bike on the street obviously you wouldn't do that here in the united states but in other countries where the rules are more lax you could totally do that so very quiet motorcycle suspension on this bike 12 inches of suspension travel this motorcycle delivers a very pleasing ride quality over the bumps and because it's so light it is just exceptionally nimble we're riding on irc dual sport tires which give a little bit of grip off-road and then a little bit of street grip in 21 inch 18 inch fitment same as an off-road bike now a motocross bike has a bigger larger diameter rear wheel just because it helps it get over the bigger obstacles that you typically have on a moto track but this has off-road wheel fitment 2118 these days a variety of motorcycle tire manufacturers make excellent high performance street rubber in 2118 size so if you wanted this bike to work a little bit better on pavement you could get a more road going street tire and have a good time conversely if you were riding off road and you wanted to put competition style motocross knobs this bike will accept it you can do it very easily so great versatility in terms of tire fitment on this motorcycle dual disc brakes keep speed in check i like the response of the rear brake and the response of the front brake but the power could be a little bit better but to be fair the front tire doesn't have really the grip to support bonsai front braking maneuvers so for all intensive purposes based on the grip capability of the irc rubber the braking performance on this motorcycle for the street is is just fine of course you can adjust the position of the brake lever like you could on a dirt bike with this little nut and clevis setup super easy to adjust with a eight millimeter wrench instrumentation is simple but effective push this button here and it's got dual trip meters gas mileage right now we're getting 98 miles to a gallon we've averaged around 30 miles per gallon if you're riding this thing near its 90 mile per hour top speed obviously higher if you're riding in the city of course you can ride this motorcycle on the freeway anywhere it is fully street legal and it really really is very nicely as you can see and the ecu reflash that honda did for 2021 it did help this motorcycle even though it did 
stutter and, and die a couple times back there in the stoplights. It does run more cleanly and the bottom end performance has smoothened out considerably. We rode this motorcycle at, at my pal's dirt bike track. We went over some jumps. He's got like a nice, very you know, G-rated arena cross track. And there it was very noticeable how much easier this motorcycle is to ride at low per RPM. The engine's less likely to, to, to stall and it has less chance to flame out. The old CRF 450L, well old, but two years old, had a propensity to flame out sometimes and that propensity has been mostly cured with this RL ECU reflashed. Like we said, this motorcycle is good for right around 90 miles per hour. Now when you're riding at that speed, it is so buzzy, it is crazy. You're not going to want to stay at 90 miles per hour very long. But it is capable of running at freeway speeds. The mirrors are a little bit cloudy. You kind of see what's going on beneath you, but the engine vibrates so excessively that it clouds the vision of the mirrors. Yet the surface area of the mirrors are very nice and it's pretty functional. I mean, after all, we're riding a dirt bike on the street. How cool is that? The suspension has damping adjustment. You can adjust the compression and rebound of the fork and shock. The fork also has a clever air bleed screw so you can, you can release the pressure inside the fork if it's a hot day or the fork's really cycling through its action and building up pressure. You can release that and, and balance out the pressure the next time you ride. I love that feature. I wish all motorcycles, even street bikes had that. I do not know why they don't. We rode this motorcycle after dark and the LED headlight really throws out a nice spread of light for a dirt bike. Old school dual sport bikes and, and street legal dirt bikes, they always had crappy lighting. So it's good to see that Honda comes from the factory with nice crisp gold LED headlamp, LED turn signals and an LED tail light. It doesn't it not only looks cool but it's very functional so good job to honda on that all right folks here we go we get to use the brakes again the front brake could be more powerful but with the limited grip of the dual sport irc front tire it's fine for what we're doing love the action the clutch has a lot of feel if you were a person new to riding you would like the clutch on this motorcycle you wouldn't like how tall the seat is though the seat is just so tall that if you're a shorter rider you're probably gonna have trouble saddling straddling this motorcycle but if you're six foot tall like me you're gonna like it very very much now we didn't get a chance to actually ride this bike like a traditional dual sport we're riding it on the street and then we veer off onto the dirt but as i mentioned before we did ride it on a g-rated arena cross track and this bike's totally capable I, I would totally ride this bike on a moto track if i fitted a little bit aggressive tires on there and slow down the action of the suspension. This bike is totally capable. And that's what's so neat about these dual sport bikes is if you're looking for one motorcycle and you live close to a trail network and you just want something, you can just ride right out of your garage. You know, maybe if you have to ride on the highway for a little bit, ride on the freeway a little bit to get there, and then you can just whale off-road on a, on a OHV trail. This thing is just awesome. It can totally do that. Maintenance, now that's the one caveat, about, caveat on this machine. Because this is based off a competition spec bike, the maintenance intervals on this motorcycle are just crazy. They're crazy for a street bike rider, for a racer, dirt bike racer, they're totally normal. But Honda recommends changing the engine oil and filter every 600 miles or 30 hours of use. 
fuel filter is also recommended to be changed out every 3,000 miles. So even though this is a street legal bike and it's going to have Honda's legendary durability, it's still going to require dirt bike like maintenance, which may dissuade some riders. Personally, I have a Honda 2016 CRF 450R. I don't ride it very often, but I ride it relatively hard. I change the engine oil on that motorcycle once a year. Once a year it gets an oil change no matter how much I ride it. And it always just runs like it's brand new every time. So kudos to Honda for having motorcycles that have such extreme durability. All right, folks, we're gonna get off the highway here and wrap things up and check in with you guys a little bit. All right, folks, there it is, Honda's 2021 CRF 450R. Oh, that was a fun ride on Honda's Dual Sport. I really like this motorcycle. Not only does it look cool, it is very functional. It, you can ride on the street, you can ride on the dirt, it has Honda's legendary craftsmanship. I appreciate the updated ECU settings, which help uh, eliminate engine flame out. It still does that a little bit, but it's much better than before. The plastic handguards are nice, especially when you're riding in the woods. And a $400 MSRP decrease is always welcome in my book. Let's do some Q&A real quick, guys, right to the top here. How are the service intervals? We talked about this. This thing needs a lot of service if you're going to ride often. But we also talked about how legendary Honda's durability is. And even if you did skip the maintenance intervals, this bike would still run. If the world was ending, I'd want this bike. I get it. It's a dirt bike in street trim, yet still. Whatever that means. All right, does it feel like the CRF 450R motocross bike? It's been a while since I've ridden a new contemporary CRF 450R motocross bike. So those bikes are always very high performance, very gnarly to ride. This thing is much more mellow, yet the ergonomics are still very CRF-like. Uh, the seat, the radiator shrouds, the foot pegs, it feels just like a motocross bike in a good way. But because it has street tires and soft-ish suspension for, at least compared to a motorbike, it works very well on the street. Didn't you just do a few one a few months ago? We did, but this is a 2021 model, and it's 2021 year, so you're in luck. More content for you. Would it make a good supermoto? Uh, I don't think so. You know, it has too much restrictive street plumbing, that heavy-duty cooling system, and the noise dampening uh, features would make it not so awesome for competition supermoto use. If you wanted a street legal supermoto, this trim would be a great way and an easy way to do it. Flop, pop on some 17s. Put a bigger front brake, and now you have a street legal super motorbike. Well, folks, that's a wrap from today's 2021 CRF 450 RLMC commute. Would I spend my $10,000 on this motorcycle? If I wanted a really reliable 450cc dual sport that's going to stand the test of time, you bet you I'd buy this bike. There are definitely other manufacturers' dual sport bikes that offer a little bit higher performance, but they're not going to give you the same quality fit, fit and finish and reliability and durability as this bike. There is no bike, there's no dual sport bike that's better built in terms of craftsmanship than this bike. All right, folks, that's a wrap. Make sure to surf on over to MotorcyclistOnline.com for all your content needs, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.